Hello, welcome to Ted's Brew Cellar. I am your most gracious host, Ted, here on the most premier alcohol review show here on YouTube, dependent on who you may ask. Uh, I'm here today with an old friend of mine, I Imogen. Hello! Um, I think you were in the background of one of my um, lost episodes. I think it was on... Uh, I think it was on... One of the uh, Chime, sort of like Trappist Belgian ales. I've had a few episodes dedicated to me, at least, for my birthday and stuff. Yeah. I like Trappist. Um, nice. But I think I lost that Trappist ale episode, unfortunately. I can't remember what happened to it. I um, think you did a French beer for my, or French wine for my birthday. Yeah, and I think for like... Some French. Info. Yeah, and I, oh, something along those lines. Um, I th funny enough, I think I did an, a cider episode for you once, even though you don't drink cider. I don't drink cider, that's true. And... Uh, so, he, and here we've got here we've got Imogen's partner, um, uh, Owen. Uh, and it's uh, it's it's spelled in the Irish way, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It means John in English. Wait, actually, no, actually doesn't. <laughs> yeah, that is, he's John. He's just an Irish John. It's just Irish for John. <sighs> I'm showing myself to be picking. How do you but... pronounce it properly? Or like that. Uh, the elegant language comes from the French Jean. That's my granddad. My granddad is Jean. I, Jean. Oh. I'm just the, probably the most Anglican man you've ever met because I was just like sort of doesn't sound English to me. It's not Stella and chips on a Friday night. Fish and chips on a Friday night. You know, fish and chips come from a Portuguese Jewish recipe. Well, to be f yeah, that is true actually. Yeah, I, I mean, I am sort of part Jewish, so I do take some pride in that. Um, now. Um, today we're going to be definitely taking a look at a drink that is not British at all, and that is Disarno, namely, uh, oh, sorry, I'm not trying to block, oh, block both of you out, it's fine. It's alright, we just need my face. <laughs> um, so, we're taking a look at, say, Disarno Velvet Liqueur. Now, I got this for, uh, to drink myself on, uh, New Year's Eve, but I got drunk enough as it was mixing blueberry vodka with, uh, tonic water, and, I don't know if they can see a thumb, yes, there we go, uh, mixing it with tonic water and lime juice. Now, that was a bad idea in of itself. I never got around to drinking this, and then uh, we just went out to the pub for a nice dinner. Mm, very nice. And uh, it, we thought it would be nice to have sort of like a nice sweet after dinner drink, and then uh, had this. Um, Disarone is kind of sort of like an amaretto liqueur. Uh, this is kind of sort of like somewhere in between that, and I would say probably... Um, uh, Bailey's and it has milk in it and it's more of like a velvety liqueur in mm. a sense. It's like a creamy de Serrano. It's really nice. Like so, you think your standard de Serrano combined almost, it's like the offspring of your standard de Serrano and Bailey's. So, That's this drink. So, with that in mind, this is a 70% alcohol volume liqueur, so it's not going to absolutely blow your socks off, but if you have it in combination with a bunch of other drinks or as part of a cocktail, it may give you the runarounds in the morning. So, um, what do you think of the design of the bottle, actually? Um, I quite like it. It feels, it feels slightly magical, almost. Like, you could almost see that being a bottle in, like, The Witcher or something like that. As they're like, yeah, pour out a little bit of that. I, I really like it because it's got a kind of, um, I don't know, it's, it's sort of a, a smooth but dappled white surface. It's quite rare. Slightly marble. It looks, yeah, it almost looks like it's dipped wax. It looks like it's made of marble. It's almost. very, it's very lush, which kind of goes with the, um, goes with the taste, the kind of, yeah, the kind of thick, luscious taste of it. Either way. It feels classy. If you're walking around town holding a bottle of that, you look less trampy and more classy. I don't know. I feel like if you're walking around tr tr town holding a bottle of hard liquor anyway, you're going to look a bit of a wrong one. Depends which town. Depends which In this town? No, it's, really? No, I'm sorry. In Brighton, it's, if you're carrying vodka, you look classy. No, 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 I'm sorry. You do not look <laughs> like a No, you don't look classy if you're carrying vodka, but if you're carrying disarado, then everyone's Grey Brighton. Grey Goose? Walking around Brighton with a bottle of Grey Goose. I'm sorry, if, if, you're, what, if you're walking around Brighton carrying a bottle of this on a Friday night... With, yeah, you're a with, classy fella. ...with your cane and top hat and your flintlock in your <laughs> pocket. Quick smooth call, what's his face? The bloke who dresses like that. Pinson tailoring. I drink Shackle. the Serrano velvet liqueur with them. Definitely. 
Yeah, that, are you we pro- have a famous person in Brighton for all you viewers out there who dresses in Regency period wear entirely, does not own a single pair of jeans. And for your That's information, the Regency was when Brighton became a place of note. That's probably well, that. there we go. Fun history facts. That's because probably of the Royal Pavilion, which was the Prince Regent's pleasure palace. He's probably the most understilled uh, Brighton person there is, uh, which is quite refreshing, actually. In... Born and raised. Now, what are we going to rate... Brighton, born and bred. Now, what are we going to rate the design of the bottle out of ten, do you think? I'd give it a solid eight. All right. What about you? The bottle? Yeah. Yeah, seven, eight. Could do a little bit more pizzazz. Yeah, like, I, you could still refine it. You know, like, if you seen some of the crack in bottles. Because, like, I, I get that it's supposed to look kind of dipped in wax almost, but the the neck is a little bit shabby. Mm. I, I, I like the colour and I like the design and concept of the bottle, but I feel like with some slightly sharp corners, it would look top class. Mm. Yeah. So, but that being said, it's still very handsome, so I'm going to give it an 8 as well. Now... This is uh, a part of like drink tasting that I feel like goes unrespected sometimes. So first of all, we're going to take taste the nose. So get a good whiff of that. This is very important in wine tasting. You've got to get sniff it before you drink. Yeah. Definitely a creamy almond. Very of course, nice. the French person is big on wine smelling. Very nice. Oh, look, it's my good chips. We are very, you know, you smell the fruit. <sighs> good heavens. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm getting a lot of almond and cream. I'm getting almonds, cream, it, and um, you know what? The faintest bit of um, marzipan as well. Yeah, I was just thinking well, marzipan, obviously. Almond. And, and, and obviously, they obviously like the original Disrono is kind of like an amaretto almondy drink, but like I think even more so with this, you get that sort of like calcified, sugary ar- um, mm. um, marzipan sort of after smell in a way. It does smell like marzipan, actually. Wait, yeah, really does. I'm gonna say. It smells like a galley You can almond. imagine you're eating the cake, you know. You can imagine you can feel. I'm going to give the nose like a 9 out of 10, just purely because it's got all the characteristics there of like what a drink like this I would expect to have, but I can appreciate that some people might find like the sheer richness of that nose a bit overpowering. Yeah, I, I it's like... quite a strong smell, it's, but it's got to be your sort of thing. Yeah. I, I like that it's um, it's got that kind of rich, creamy, alcoholic smell, but it hasn't got that harshness in the nose that you get with alcoholic drinks sometimes. Mm. It's, it's, it feels, it's really well balanced for, for a smell. It feels rich, but it doesn't feel like it's going to burn It's not you. overwhelming. No. no. What would you rate the nose out of 10 then, do you think? I'd give it a 9. Yeah, pretty high. I mean, you can't really improve it much. Can you? Uh, so 9's all across the board, which is uh, which is um, rather unprecedented, in actually. Um, now, um, on to the most important part of the video, which is to see what this sucker tastes like. Oh, so, yeah. uh, to anyone at home, I hope you have a good weekend ahead. Probably won't be an episode tomorrow because I'll be out drinking with colleagues, but I wish you all a fair weekend and uh, bottoms up. Santé! So it's got the initial um, sort of like almondy amaretto taste of. Um, of like I think uh, original Disarono, and it's got like this sort of like um, this slight burn that reminds me of kind of like sort of a blended whiskey almost, and mm. then and then it's just about to say it's got a whiskey burn to it. Mm. And then it's got like this slight, th- and then it's got this bit of a through line of kind of like the same kind of creaminess that you'd find in like Bailey's, but more mild. And then that kind of combines at the end to make this kind of what I feel is very like much like a white chocolate cream mixed with marzipan kind of aftertaste. Yeah, it's got this. It's got a real rich mouth feel, and it kind of it rolls along the tongue really nice. It's got it, a dying throat nice and smooth. Like it's got a real good feel to it. It almost feels beautiful taste too. Oh, mm, nice. It almost feels like I've just done a shot of whiskey and immediately had a half glass of milk and a piece of marzipan afterwards. Like it almost comes in stages. I had like the cream hit me first and then it was the burn and then it went back to the cream like you said and you had that period. The cream smooths out the burn perfectly. Really. It's no, it's, it's really bloody nice. nice. It's very nice. And to be fair, like if you ate, if you did that all of that in one go as you said it in real life, you people would look at you like you're a nutcase. But because it's in a classy <laughs> bottle like this, people don't bat an eye. Um 
So I think, how would you rate it? How would you compare it to like the original Disarono? Because I feel like I I'd definitely prefer it because the original Disarono could sometimes be a little bit too harsh. See, I prefer the dis. I prefer the. I think I would rather drink this on its own, but I feel like I probably prefer the original Disarono just because I feel like you'd do more with it, and it's got a much more versatile flavour and scope to it. This is harder to mix. As well. yeah. yeah. This would be harder See, to mix. See, I feel like I could much. I, it would be better for me if I had more of the original Disarano than this. I feel like this is good for sort of one, maybe two drinks. It's quite rich and creamy and quite heavy on the stomach. Original Disarano, I feel like it just goes right through you, but you still get the same like flavour, same effect, that burn as well. The burn is stronger in the original Disarano, but I quite like maybe a bit of the burn. Mm. I think I just have to go for the original Disarano, but this is a very close second contender. I have to say this beats original Disarano for me. Mm. So I find the original Disarano to be, I don't know, it's, it's too harsh for the amount of pleasure you're getting from it. But I think this is more pleasure than harshness. Mm, see, I, I like Although the I am, harshness in an original Disarano. I am a big lover for a creamy drink, to be fair. So. I mean, you're Irish, aren't you? You land the Baileys. Yeah. And Guinness. Um, I'm, ge drinks. I'm gonna have to go with Imogen's uh, take on that there because I feel like yeah. I feel like I could knock a few of these back, but just because of the uh, the presence of milk in it and then uh, the richness and t nature of it all, I, I can easily enjoy this until the end of time, but not nearly in the same some volume as the the original Tisserano. So hence, I'm probably gonna give it. Probably like an 8, I think, out of 10 for the overall flavour and taste. I'd give it an 8. It's lovely in one drink, two, but after that you'd make you, you'd make, you'd feel a bit sick if you had too many of these. I, I'd give it a 9 because I could have at least 7 before I started to feel a bit ill. If I could have 10, then I'd give it 10 in a row without feeling ill, then you could call it a 10, but I don't think I could. Well, there's only really one way to find out, but I don't think there's enough to drink. Um, so... Just to let you know, like nine is elite level. It's really fucking it's nice. It's really nice. I, no, because like on That's the, bloody on the it's a good fucking drink. I, on the um on the last round. On yes, after the first minute mark. But I was gonna say, like, <laughs> on on this show the way the rating works is like eight and a half to nine and a half is uh elite level. And then like uh nine and a half to Nine and a half to nine point nine out of ten is uh, le uh, legendary, and then ten out of ten is god tier. Well, I, th I think nine is acceptable. I think eight. Eight, eight is uh, excellent tier. It's it, it's it an excellent drink. It's excellent to quite spectacular for me. That's fair enough. So an average of eight point. I can't do averages. Average of eight point three. Something around that mark, I'd say. Mark. Now, so uh, I think that's pretty pretty comprehensive uh, review of the beer. So um, how to wrap up? Well, basically, as always, if you guys like this video, leave a like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future episodes of Ted Brew Cellar, leave them in the comment section down below. If you want to see me collab with any other people you may know, uh, let me know as well. Um, if you want to check out anything else I do online, I'll leave the links to all that in the video description down below. And uh, if you like this video, leave a like, share, and subscribe. And do you guys have anything else to add on to the end? I was just going to say, comment who you think is better, France or Ireland, or Great Britain. But I doubt Britain's going to get very far. Also, I'd like to point out my little tiny umbrella hat. Yeah, that came from Imogen's uh, cocktail at the uh, pub. This is not our first drink of the evening. We do apologise. Also, I find it uh, particularly pertinent that you're uh, comparing nationalism of Ireland and France when we're reviewing a drink that's Italian and that was uh, bottled in the UK. Yeah, but still, who's better, Britain or France? So, uh, no, 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 right, just like, Ireland or leave France. a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe. Oh, Ireland. Ah! Know your response. Leave the horse. <laughs> Stay safe. Drink responsibly. Know your limits. And I'll see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Booze Seven. <laughs>